not bad for a Tuesday morning. <laughs> yeah. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in for another episode on Anderson's TV. And today, all the way from Paris, Beautiful yeah, Paris. It's I can't even say the name properly. It's Laura Cox, although she yeah, says it that's much the way nicer than I do. You should say it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Woke up at 5 a.m. from Paris and I'm here finally. That so. is dedication. Yeah. <laughs> dedication on the Eurostar at 5 a.m. Well, look, people may recognize you from one of the biggest <laughs> guitar YouTube channels on the internet. And I was looking back over. Um, I was looking back over your channel and I can't believe how long you've been doing this for. Yeah, uh, more than 10 years. It's mad, yeah. isn't it? I think it's coming up for like, is it 2006 is the first I video? Uh, I'm not sure. It's Yeah, I think so. 2006 or 2008 or something like that. That's so more mad. than 10 years. I feel old. And yet, well, <laughs> don't worry, not in this company. Yeah. You're very young still. Um, and yet you were quite a late starter to the guitar as well. So I think so. Yeah, I, I started playing um, around uh, 14 mm -hmm. and I wish I could have started earlier but uh, yeah I, I, I started to be interested interested in playing guitar around 14. Did you play an instrument before that? Or? No no not really guitar was my first love. And who was it who did you see or what did you hear that made you go that's um, what I want to do? I, um, I, I, at the time I think uh, in my family there aren't any musicians but my father he used to listen to great rock mu classic rock music and, and uh, classic country music and uh, I think that's uh, when I when I um, I, ha I heard his music I uh, I began to uh, to think yeah I want to I want to try to uh, to play those riffs and uh, and then a few years after that uh, in high school I met some uh, some friends and we were all into rock and roll and I, I decided to pick up the guitar and uh, start playing and uh, I fell in love with uh, Slash and Dire Straits. And, uh. That's great. I mean, can you remember learning, um, I mean, I suppose 14, it's kind of one of those ages where it's still a good age to start. You're not yeah. too far behind. But what do you remember about just wanting to learn to play the guitar at 14 year old in uh, just outside of Paris, what what were the challenges? Can you you know, what, or did you take to it pretty quickly? Um, I I had uh, I had nothing in mind at the time. I just wanted to to have fun, and um, and yeah, I, I first started playing acoustic guitar because mm -hmm. I wanted to sing and to play acoustic. Uh, but then I quickly realized I wanted to play electric guitar. Um, but yeah, there, there there weren't any challenges because I um, I. I wasn't expecting anything. I, right. I just wanted to have fun. Okay. And did you go through like a formal guitar tuition or just teach yourself? Um, I took lessons uh, for the first uh, four years. I had a great teacher. It wasn't in a, in a real music school. It was a, with a, but he was a great, mm -hmm. great teacher. And he, he made me want to uh, keep playing and uh, keep practicing. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I took lessons uh, for the first uh, four years and I think it helped me a lot. Okay. And then, mm -hmm. now the YouTube thing must mm -hmm. have been, I mean, how long had you been playing before you started posting videos uh, two, on YouTube? Two years, I Yeah, think. I was going to say, not long then. Yeah. Yeah, but the video, my first videos were crap. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I was, I was going to say the opposite. I was okay, going to say you got, cool. good, you got good pretty quick, you know, in, yeah, in two years. Yeah, I was years. Uh, really um, passionate about it. and. Um, one day, I know at the time, I spent a lot of time watching other people, YouTubers, mm -hmm. covering classic rock solos, and and I I told myself it's a challenge. It mm -hmm. was my first challenge. I want to play like him. I want right. to I want to be able to to play this solo and this solo, and and because those guys from YouTube were really a source of motivation for me. And uh, I, I, I was thinking maybe I could, um, I could motivate some people to, uh, to uh, start playing too. So I'll try to, to learn those solos and see. And, and ha so how many hours a day would you typically, so 14 years old, you're still at school. Yeah. I don't know how the French system works, but I guess it's <laughs> similar to the English system. I so think, you've got yeah. exams at sort of 15, yeah. 16. Or, but were, were you just going, that's it. I'm, I don't want to, I'm just going to. Forget maths and no, French. At first, and no, no, I was into school. I, okay. Yeah, I was a, um, I was a, a good student, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, it was um, yeah after I graduated 
things uh, got complicated because I was so into guitar. But when I was when I was 14, um, yeah, it was school first, and uh, guitar was just uh, for fun. It's very sensible. And uh, yeah, and and because I am, um, I I couldn't uh, imagine that someday I would be uh, like a professional guitar mm -hmm. player. Uh, for me, it wasn't. Uh, I I couldn't even think about it. And so uh, after I graduated, I uh, I started to uh, uh, to um, study uh, things, uh, architecture, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, some th some things that uh, I didn't really care about, uh, and it didn't work because I was uh, I was ditching school and uh, I was just uh, uh, heading back home to play guitar. So um, after that, I was wondering uh, what I was going to do with my life, and um, and uh, yeah, it was around uh, I think maybe when I was a uh, 20, I, I, I started to think maybe I think uh, guitar is the only thing I'm uh, that's great I, uh, I'm I'm made for <laughs> yeah I mean we'll talk about your band and, and some of the music you've written more recently but the the YouTube thing I'm still kind of fascinated by are you, are you know what were you hoping would happen by putting nothing video? you just did yeah. it for fun yeah yeah because at the time there there, there weren't many people doing that and uh, not 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 girls, yeah. uh, especially. Um, and I think um, no, I, I didn't expect anything at all. And uh, after a few months, I I, um, I realized I had uh, lots of uh, views. Mm. Um, and then uh, yeah, the, it motivated me to uh, uh, keep on uh, uploading keep. videos. Uh, but at the time when I, I first um, started uploading my videos, I wasn't expecting anything. Um, what was your? What were you recording them on then? Just a little little camera. Uh, and... the first, it was a webcam. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. just on a laptop or something. Yeah. Okay. A webcam, and um, then um, a little camera, <laughs> then um, uh, yeah, big bigger uh, cameras. And, I mean, yeah. it's because the, there's the, quite a few videos on your channel mm -hmm. that have had you know three, four million views and upwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, which is the first one that really? You know, was there one video that you put up and then like a week later you're like, oh my God, it's got uh, like a million views. I'm not sure because I, am, I, I can't stand to watch my videos. <laughs> so once I upload them, I never, <laughs> ne never watch them again. Um, so I think it, it was something um, by uh, the Guns N' Roses, maybe the Switch Idol Mind Solo yeah. or Night Train or uh, Money for Nothing from uh, Dire Straits so or some you know, Soldiers yeah. of Swing, something like that. I'm not sure. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I, I don't think I saw them... I certainly didn't see them when they first came out. I'm not. You were doing YouTube before we were doing YouTube, which yeah, is just crazy. Um, and I think that that's where I got lucky because I started early without e even re realizing it, um, and that's why it, it worked. Yeah. But uh, some, sometimes people are, are asking me on uh, on Facebook or on uh, Instagram, um, what advice could could you give me to to have some uh, some views? I wanna mm -hmm. I wanna um, do the, the same thing than you do. But uh, the truth is, I don't know because mm -hmm. I never thought about it. It just, uh, it just I'm not sure way. anybody. I think there. Are, I've met people who once they've got their channel quite big already do start to become more technical and scientific about how they grow it more mm. but the first yeah bit i don't want to do that it's yeah. just it's luck isn't it yeah. luck and just and yeah. just being yourself and doing something that people want to watch i think so so you two came first before you were doing band work yeah or? Yeah, and that's my main problem, I think, it, because I, I was uh, used to just uh, playing alone in yeah. my bedroom for uh, eight years, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I've never <laughs> been in a band uh, before my, my band. Yeah. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, I, I started, I, I met Mathieu, who's the, the other guitarist in the, in the band. And he's the one who told me, uh, you know, music is about sharing, mm -hmm. sharing something with real people. And you should um, get out of your home and play with uh, real people, and I was afraid of that yeah. <laughs> I, because I spent so much, so many years just playing on my own on, on, on uh, backing tracks and uh, recording uh, alone. So it, it was really um, frightening for me to go out there and yeah. play with real people, and that's my main. Um, uh, I, I, I wouldn't say it's a mistake because it's my, mm. it's the way I, I did things, but uh, I think it's a, it's a good thing when. Uh, when uh, young, young people start guitar and then uh, start a band just mm. uh, a few months after uh, learning how to play guitar. Yeah, so. I mean that's, what, what did you find the, 
because I that you know when I learned to play guitar, that was it. You know, I was in a band within a few months of playing the guitar, yeah. and it was great. And then I stopped playing guitar, and da, 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 and actually I had the other, YouTube kind of gave me the inspiration to want to start playing guitar yeah. again. And you've obviously done it the other way around. But mm. what what were the the challenges from you know, I don't really like the term bedroom guitar player, but I guess that's what, <laughs> yeah. you know, we all are. Um, what, were the, what were the main challenges from going from being that kind of bedroom guitar player to, to being in a band? I, I, I didn't want to disappoint uh, people okay. that were following me on my channel. And uh, because um, when, I, when I first, uh, when I got on stage for the first time, I, I put a lot of pressure on me mm. because... Um, I know that they were expecting, I don't know, the big uh, Laura Cox from YouTube. And uh, normally when you first, uh, when you have your first uh, stage experience, you, you, ha you, uh, I, you, you don't have any background. You, mm. you don't, and uh, it, was, um, it right. was a frightening at first, but now we are, we've been touring for uh, the, we've been touring a lot, but mostly in France for the past uh, two years. And uh, now I feel much more comfortable on stage. <laughs> do, you, do you find the... I certainly do that no matter how big your audience is on YouTube and you know you have hundreds of thousands sometimes millions of people watching your videos you've always got the option whilst you're recording to go oh no I messed that bit up scrap that I'll do it again yeah whereas when you're live yeah. you know if you're in a band it's just that's it even yeah. if there's only 10 people watching yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. there's no second chance so yeah. do you find as a guitar player that you've improved much much faster since um, being in a band yeah, than just practicing because it's at the home. real thing. Mm -hmm. uh, YouTube isn't isn't real. It's a it's cool to have a, uh, so so many views. But um, now I, I'm a, my main uh, project and my main concern is my band, mm -hmm. and um, I think I've uh, uh, gotten better and I've e evolved more in the past two years than uh, uh, I've been uh, last uh, ten years. Did you? Did you? I know, I know the bit that I struggle most when I go from uh, just playing like this to playing uh, in a band is I can't play the guitar standing up. Oh, did, yeah. did you, did you when get that? You to, you yeah, I just, I'm so used to sitting down playing guitar. Yeah. As soon as I stand up and the position of the guitar changes, mm. it really throws me. Yeah, sometimes I, uh, I, I, um, I have to uh, tell myself you have to stand up when you're practic practicing yeah. because it's not, it's, it's not the same. But yeah, it's. Uh, and did you always, did you always sing, or were you, you know, whilst you were learning, were you, were you kind of, you know, singing the lyrics over the songs as well, or was that another uh, skill you had to learn? Um. um Guitar is my first love is and my real passion. So um, for uh, many years I put guitars, uh, guitar first, um, and I never really cared about uh, uh, my vocals. But then I realized uh, as we were um, doing shows that uh, the first thing uh, people will hear at a show is the vocals. So I, I needed to to work more on that, mm -hmm. and um, so that's what I've been doing. Uh, these uh, two past years, I think, and I really want to put the these two skills at the same same level because mm. I, even if I didn't realize it uh, at first, uh, I think it's uh, really important. I, I mean, mm. you look at all the you know all of the successful people that you know you, you might want to emulate. Um, the the people having real success are really singers, you yeah. know, who who can play guitar. I think you know really. There's very, very few, you know, you've got Satriani or yeah. Steve Vai, yeah. you know, but most most of them, you know, the, the John Mayers and the Eric Clapton and the Joe mm -hmm. Bonamassas and everything like that, if they couldn't sing as well, they wouldn't have a yeah. fraction of the And I didn't want to play following. instrumental music because it's mm. not really my thing. I, um, I'm really more into a classic mm. rock band and... Um, and I, I felt like I could sing. I wanted to do it. It was a challenge. And, uh, and so I'm really getting into it r right now. And it's one of my, uh, I think it's my biggest challenge mm -hmm. at, at the moment. Does it, is it, does it help having a second guitar player in the band than if you're going to sing? Yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you find that, you know, whilst you're singing, you have to keep the playing quite yeah, simple? Yeah, because uh, the, um, I think the, um, the song I feel the, mo the most comfortable playing on stage is mm -hmm. the, the ones I, I don't have any solos in it and I, I can focus on, the, mm -hmm. on my vocals. And we have uh, one song in particular in our uh, new album. And, um, and it's not uh, necessarily my favorite song, but um, I'm really having fun uh, playing it on stage because I, I don't do complicated things on the guitar and I can have fun with the vocals. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I mean, is that when you when you start songwriting, have you have you even then found that you've kind of you know sort of matured as a songwriter? So now it's less about thinking about a flash guitar part, much more about just finding yeah. a nice hook or a melody or something. Yeah, because when I when I started playing guitar. Uh, I was really into uh, guitar heroes like uh, Slash, mm-hmm. uh, Bonamassa, Mark Knopfler, and um, and I learned a, a lot uh, thanks to them. Uh, but now I uh, I'm more into um, not not guitar heroes, just uh, 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 great rock songs and newer 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 bands that uh, that uh, come with uh, just a great melody mm-hmm. and uh, n- not necessarily uh, um, technical solos. Yeah. No, I I. I I think, yeah, I find that as well, just that something super flash and difficult to play only holds my attention for yeah. quite a small and then, period uh, of time, <laughs> but a great so song, yeah. you know, you can listen to as many times forever and it never gets never gets boring. Yeah. So um, tell us about the, the, the band now then and, and life on the road. And, and after this, I'll, we'll, we'll definitely get nerdy about all yeah. the gear <laughs> as well. But so are you, how, are you out touring? Sort of full time now. Um, no, in France we're mostly um, on uh, doing shows on the weekends. So yeah. um, um, during the week we can uh, work on the the instrument, uh, rehearse and um, write songs. Mm-hmm. And uh, on the weekends we're playing, and we've been playing almost every weekend uh, since the release of our first album uh, two years and a half ago. Um, and uh, but sometimes we have a uh, real real tours, um, mostly when we. Uh, when we go to uh, Germany or mm-hmm. Spain or, or the UK, um, and uh, and yeah, it's uh, it's it's tiring. It's it's exhausting. Yeah. Uh, the the part that I like the the less is the unloading the van and loading the van, and I have bigger uh, orange cabs bigger than this one, and four 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 twelve orange cabs that we have to unload wow. and load at it. It's our new uh, new setup for the new tour. Can't you get orange to make you sort of pretend ones or something that are only? Isn't that what Iron Maiden has? Isn't it? It's just like the whole back line is just it we, folds up like a rug or something. And then yeah, <laughs> I would love to, but but uh, yeah, I we um, so uh, no, it's a uh, touring is a. Uh, is not YouTube. <laughs> no, for sure. It's a, it's a, no, it's a, it's rock and roll. It's fun. It's a, but it's exhausting. But I'm really, really happy to be to be doing that. It's a, so 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 much different from yeah. uh, my. Uh, Did you do any big festivals over the summer or? Um, la- last summer or next summer? It, I'm just wondering. Have you done anything where there's like ten thousand people? We or? we played at. Uh, it wasn't on a big stage, but we we played at Download Festival in France. Oh, cool. um, uh, a year ago, uh, and um, I think I can say it now because I just heard the news uh, earlier in the day. But we're playing at Hellfest in France, and it's my favorite festival. Yeah. I I, uh, I saw the the lineup earlier um, t- uh, today, and uh, I th- I know there's going to be Deep Purple and Judas Priest, and uh, we're opening on the main stage, and I'm so happy oh, about it. It's, you, it's, it's one of my dreams. So I. I uh, I heard the news uh, today. <laughs> That's, oh, well, I, well, I love it when we get a scoop like yeah. that on, on this. But yeah, Hellfest is, for the last two or three years, when the all the headline acts get announced at all the rock festivals in yeah. Europe, Hellfest has been has had some unbelievable acts, arguably maybe the, the best, yeah. even you know bigger than Down. And I know and it's my sometimes. favorite festival, and I've been uh, in the in the audience for the past 10 years. And, That's uh, great. and uh, each time I was thinking, maybe one day we'll be so you, on that stage. Are you secretly like a little bit heavier than the kind of music that you do? I mean, if you could, be, if like in your dream band, would you be in something a little bit heavier? I don't know. It's hard to answer that because uh, I have um, lots of uh, different influences. I can listen to um, bluegrass music and okay. uh, uh, metal like Five Finger Death Punch or, or you know, <laughs> things like that. And, and uh, everything that's in between. Uh, my, um, uh, my favorite bands at the moment, I think they are uh, really different, uh, like uh, Blackberry Smoke, mm-hmm. Blackstone Cherry. Mm-hmm. Hellstorm, yeah. uh, the, these kind of bands. And, but uh, they're kind of properly sort of deep-rooted rock yeah. bands, really, aren't they? Yeah, Just yeah. like, I mean, if there was a band, and th- this could be a, a band that's current or an old band or whatever, but who said, "Yeah, a guitar player's broken his leg. We need a we need a stand-in. Laura, can you do this? Who would it be? 
I don't know. I, I, I don't have big dreams like I had when I started guitar. It would certainly be one of the bands I just told you about. Okay. Yeah, just Blackberry Smoke would be perfect for me. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. okay, or, so you... or Sheryl Crow. I want to play with Sheryl Crow. She's amazing. <laughs> now, yes. It has nothing to do with Blackstone Sherry, but... <laughs> no, 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 but she rocks. Yeah, yeah. big time. All right, well, look, um, we'll put in the description below links for where you can find out where Laura's touring. And, yeah. And uh, it's not hard to find on YouTube, trust me. <laughs> no. Um, but uh, let's nerd out about gear, because yeah. we love gear me on too. this uh, channel. <laughs> now, I know pretty much since your first videos that you seem to be most comfortable playing something like a Les Paul. Yeah. You've had Epiphones and other stuff, and uh, you today have come in, I'm a bit jealous, uh, with my yeah. one of my favorite <laughs> kind of Les Pauls. But tell us about what it was about maybe the first time you played a, um, a Les Paul. And why, why is it so comfy to you rather than yeah. you know, a Strat or a the, Tele style? Or? The first, uh, I first fell in love with the, the sound of a Les Paul. Um, thanks to Slash, I mm -hmm. think. And the uh, first time I heard uh, the Knocking on Heaven's Door solo, I wanted to buy a Les Paul, but then I, I learned it wasn't played with a Les Paul, it oh. was with a Flying V, I think. Is it really? <laughs> yeah, I think so. So cheesy, that guitar <laughs> so, solo. But I, well, still, I still love the, <laughs> the, the Les Paul, and I wanted to have one. So my first Les Paul, it was an Epiphone. It was the Slash Gold Top, and I, my first videos on YouTube were, uh, I, I was playing with this one. Uh, but when I got my first paycheck, uh, I, I think I was around, uh, I don't know, it, it wasn't that long ago, maybe in uh, 2013, mm -hmm. um, I, I, would, I, I was able to buy a real Gibson. Uh, it was a used one, um, a Les Paul uh, Classic, Les Paul That's Classic great. Plus uh, from 1997. And uh, with a... A, um, an amazing honey burst because I was uh, in love with a burst. Um, so I got this one, and that's uh, a guitar I, I played on on, on stage or, uh, of often. Um, and most recently, I got this one, and I, I can't believe I, I never tried uh, Les Paul Juniors before uh, because it was a real revelation to me. It's like I, I've always loved Telecasters, and okay. I, I feel like uh, the Junior is a mix between. A classic Les Paul and a Telecaster because um, you have the a kind of, of twang in the in the yeah. sound. Yeah. It almost sounds like a Telecaster yeah. to me, um, and it, it can clean up nicely. So uh, You've got the big, pretty yeah, pretty big. Yeah, and I, big I've neck. always been a fan of um, big uh, fat necks, yeah. and this one I think is a vintage 15 X or something. Uh, because on my um, previous, my um, main Gibson Les Paul, uh, it's a 60s slim mm -hmm. taper neck. Yeah. And uh, it's easy to play, but I don't feel really comfortable with yeah. it. So uh, when I, um, I tried this one at the Gibson show showroom in, in Paris a few months ago, I immediately fell in love with it. And I know it's not a, a really expensive guitar, uh, but I like the, um, the fact that it's really, it's simple. It just had one, one pickup, one, uh, two, two knobs. Do you find I sometimes because I'm I don't own one of these and I keep yeah. I keep meaning to particularly I think sometimes I, I walk you see real fifties ones you mm -hmm. know come up for not crazy I mean certainly massively less than a than a Les Paul you know like a fifties Les Paul standard would, would be uh, in fact sometimes even less than even like a seventies Les Paul yeah. standard um, and there's something that I'm drawn to these because whenever I'm playing a guitar like this one or a regular Les Paul in my mind I'm always like. There's so many options where I could think, oh, maybe I'd sound a bit better yeah. here, or maybe I'd sound a bit better here, or maybe here. And, and there's, you're ending, thinking too yeah, much. Yeah, you're thinking about, too much, uh, yeah. aren't you? And sometimes I find pedals do the same to me. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's when we were talking about Jared Nichols before, and sometimes it's nice to just go, I've got a guitar with one pickup. Yeah no pedals and into an amp. To, yeah. yeah, that's it. What can I do? I've just got to, if I want to make it sound different, I've just got to play different. Yeah. Is that part of the attraction with I, that? I think so. And uh, yeah, and I think that the, yeah, like I said, the fact that it's, for me, it's, uh, it reminds me of a telly and I've always mm. loved telecasters and Les Paul and for me, it's the perfect uh, combination. Uh, I love the neck. I love everything about it. And I love the fact that I'm not afraid to beat it. It, it, mm. it, it just, uh, is it, it's not expensive. It's a, uh, yeah, because with a real Les Paul, mm. it's uh, like a, 
you know, at a... a work of art? Yeah. 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 And this one, no, and th th it's what I like about yeah. it. So, no, I really, I love the, the feeling of it. I was going to ask you, go on, you play, let's have a... No, I have nothing you, to you, play. You just want a noodle, don't you? Yeah, yeah, um, no, it's so... The twang. <laughs> it's great. I mean, so in, in the great debate around relict guitars and brand new shiny guitars, are you are you looking forward to making that look like? I it's... think it will look better when it, yeah. uh, when I I used it a lot because I, it's just uh, two months old I think, yeah. um, and uh, I like uh, the way uh, juniors look when they're old. But yeah. I didn't want to uh, to uh, oh, scratch it. it we can drag it around the car park and stuff <laughs> if, if you, you want, want to smash it up a bit. No, I mean it's. I think that will, uh, mm -mm -mm. like maybe a year or two years of, of a lot of touring and yeah. that'll start to look just yeah. awesome. Yeah, just beer every, everywhere. Beer. And yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All the other things that go when you're on tour. Yeah. Um, so what should we do next? Should we do pedals or amps? Uh, as you want, yeah. Okay, let's do amps because quite so, early days you, again, I think, again, I'm going back maybe six, seven, eight years on your channel yeah. and you started using the little, like the Terror or something, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, and I first bought it because it was light and small and I mm -hmm. could carry it myself <laughs> when we, yeah. we were we were doing, uh, doing gigs. Um, but then the other guitarist in my band, Mathieu, he uh, he play he plays on a big uh, Marshall the YJM you know mm, in Green Mountain the, it's a big head <laughs> with a big sound Huge. and I, I felt uh, my uh, my dual terror um, sounded a little small <laughs> compared yep. to his, his amp so I, I wanted to stick with Orange because I I've been playing those amps since. since uh, for as long as I can remember um, and I I love the the looks on stage it's part of our mm -hmm. of our you know, and uh, for our image, um, and um, so I wanted to stick with Orange, and uh, I tried uh, several of their um, models, and the Rocker Vip was mm -hmm. the one that uh, I I think su suited me best for the the kind of uh, music that I play. Um, I um, I mostly used th these past years. I had the Rocker Vip uh, uh, 50, and a few uh, months ago I bought this one. The, the 100 mm -hmm. and I, it's uh, it's real uh, I, I I love it and I have a uh, orange uh, 4 412 caps and uh, I think I, I found my uh, I, I, I'm not looking for anything else. So are, are all four of those cabs plugged in when you're on stage? No, only two only of them. Two. Yeah, only two. Yeah, I don't need a, I don't need four. It's, it's still... just for the looks. The four, but two of them are plugs. That must. I bet it sounds great, though, doesn't it? Yeah, no, it's cool. And we and so the other guitarist, Matthew, is playing Marshall, and I'm playing Orange. So we don't have the same kind of sound. He loves a uh, Gibson SGs, mm -hmm. and I prefer Les Paul. So we. Well, no, I, I, I think. I'm just trying to see how you got that set up because I is it is it not too much distortion? Uh, and... Yeah, I, at noon distortion right, okay. at noon. Uh, I don't use the. I, I know it's good, but I don't use the clean channel. Mm -hmm. I, uh, when I have a um, a good uh, crunch or overdriven uh, tone uh, on a, an amp, I prefer mm -hmm. to use the the overdrive of the amp. Uh, you sound like Rob Chapman. That's, oh yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> he basically he doesn't even know what the clean channel is for <laughs> yeah. on an amplifier. It's just and, uh, <laughs> no. I I, I like uh, for me or, orange is better on the on the crunch on the overdriven channel. Uh, uh, I like the fact that you have an uh, attenuator, uh, yes. attenuator um, and I use that a lot. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, but, but the settings, I uh, I don't like too much um, mids mm -hmm. uh, because on the uh, I have um, um, cabs with a V30 mm -hmm. speakers, and uh, I think it sounds a little harsh when you push the mids. Um, but yeah, uh, otherwise I, it's pretty. Pretty simple. It looks great. I mean, I was what I, I forget the name of the tune, but the, the the latest band video that you've got on the site now, yeah. where it's it starts with the eight ball yeah, coming up, blues. yeah, and you've got the full orange. Yeah. state. it looks it does look awesome. I, I I still think that's kind of a shame nowadays that um, most venues you just could, you couldn't even really take one four by twelve into most yeah. venues now. Can it's, you uh, it depends. Uh, on our la latest show, um, we we load uh, all of my four uh, four twelve in the van, and when we arrived at the in the venue, it was a really really small stage, and I thought we I, I carried the the, the cabs <laughs> and uh, we were going to <laughs> to leave them in the in the van. So oh, that's a shame. Is the yeah. is the ultimate dream for you? Does success look like when you can have a roadie to take your cabs in is that um, like, is that the dream at the moment? <laughs> it would be 
Yeah, it would be cool, but it's not my uh, ultimate dream. <laughs> <laughs> it would be for me, I think. If I had to carry four four by twelves everywhere, yeah. that would just but be I, the dream. I don't, I don't do it alone. <laughs> no, that's I have fair a, enough. like a five or six guys with me, and we <laughs> we can do it together. So let's talk about pedals. Yeah, it's not the biggest pedal board I've ever no, seen, but no. it's got some nice pedals on it. Uh, it's the compact version of my pedal board. Oh, so there's board. a bigger yeah. one for yeah, yeah. other shows. Just, uh, I have uh, my main pedal board. Uh, it's this one, but with a um, wireless system, um, um, volume boost for the solos, um, um, an AB box uh, mm -hmm. to have the two two amps uh, mm -hmm. plug behind me, um, a wah pedal. But uh, I just um, uh, took my favorite and uh, and brought them here. Uh, so it's really I, I like to keep it simple, uh, mm -hmm. just like the amp and the guitar. Um, so just a uh, Volume pedal uh, tuner, my favorite overdrive, uh, the J Rocket Archer. Mm -hmm. uh, I usually have another one, um, the Solo Dallas Storm. Oh yeah, I love I love this pedal mm -hmm. too. But uh, I just wanted to bring one and um, a delay. Uh, right. So yeah, this is my uh, yeah. Let's have a listen. Main uh, overdrive. <laughs> So, um, no, I put the gain at uh, It's zero. like classic Klon it's kind off. of settings, yeah. isn't it? So push the volume and... Yeah, yeah, just a volume, Put no, some no of that mid-range back in, doesn't it? And, so. uh, yeah, 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 I, I love that pedal and I mostly uh, uh, put it on for my uh, lead parts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's a qu quite simple. And then uh, there's a um, couple of songs in our um, new album where I played um, lap steel in the studio. I saw, not live, but there's a, yeah. was it, is it the Cheryl Crow cover that you've done where you've got the lap still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's cool. And uh, so there there are a couple of songs where I play, I played lap still. I'm not a lap still player, but I'm, I'm trying. Um, and um, and we, we are going to play uh, these songs on stage, but I didn't want to bring the lap still on mm -hmm. stage. So I tried to emulate the, the sound of, a, of the lap still with mm -hmm. a volume pedal and a delay. Okay. So, I'm still working on it, but... So I, I like to, uh, to play with the, this pedal, just yep. to emulate the sound of the, of the lap steel. Um, and yeah, that, that's it. And other, other than it being French, what was it that you liked about the Anna Sounds delay? Um, <laughs> I am. Um, it's uh, I, 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 I won't lie. The first time I um, I bought um, an Anna Sounds pedal, it was because I loved the the looks on the, the wooden, on, on the yeah, yeah 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 and there were the um, the first um, the first uh, guitar uh, company to uh, to uh, build pedals that look uh, so. So beautiful to me, and um, so I, I begin to be interested in that in that uh, brand just because they they look so good, uh, and I tried um, some of their pedals, and um, I I know the guys from uh, Anna Sound, they're really nice, and I, I love the delay. It's an analog sounding mm -hmm. delay, so I I am um, I only used it for some lead part and um, and uh, like mm -hmm. uh, em, lap steel em, emulation sound, but. It's kind of how I, I typically same how I would have mine set up. Just like a little bit of analog delay just thickens the whole kind of sound yeah. up, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and so what other pedals uh, would be on the bigger board other than the, the Solo Dallas? Um, I have a Moore Water, you mm -hmm. know, and I love this pedal because uh, it doesn't have a switch on it. So when I am on stage with a uh, Kiehl's, um, I don't have to uh, click. That's, that's the tiny wah wah, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a little small, <clears throat> but uh, I love the fact that you don't have any switch, so uh, I just have to step on it and then it's on, and it's uh, really easy to use. Uh, so I, I bought it 
um, I bought it for mm -hmm. that for that use on stage. Um, yeah, and uh, AB box uh, tuner wireless system. Um, and what else do I have? I think that's that's all volume boost. I have an MXR uh, micro amp, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, and uh, that's why I had a Univibe too, but I, I don't use it very often. I got, uh, I've got yeah. a Univibe on here, and it, and it just I love love the sound of it just on yeah. its own, and yet mm -hmm. I can't really find any songs that I ever play when I kind oh, of yeah? use it. It's like yeah. it's just a great sounding pedal yeah, that yeah. never gets switched on. Have you? ever ventured away from sort of real valve amplifiers and thought oh i could simplify this whole thing if i just <laughs> bought a helix or a kemper or something not, or you... uh, not for the use on stage because i, I really I, we are a classic rock band and i um, i love the the way it looks with the mm -hmm. uh, big big uh, tube amps uh just uh but when i'm home uh recording videos or just playing it's uh much easier to have a uh, just I, I can plug my guitar in my uh, sound uh, sound card are you just uh, using software at home are you yeah for... yeah yeah because i have a small orange uh, rocker um, 32 i think mm -hmm. um but uh, it's too loud for <laughs> my apartment and i uh, i prefer to uh, just use a uh, uh, when i'm home i um i like to use um bias effects uh, yeah, yeah. positive the grid. positive grid yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. software and i think it it's really easy to use i don't have to uh, to plug uh, into a, a real guitar amp, and uh, when I home, it's the best solution for me. It's mm. easy. It's uh, I don't I don't uh, bother the neighbors, and uh, it's. Uh, and you just listening because you're you're the stuff that you that you're putting on your your channel. Are you writing the backing tracks for them as well, or are you just downloading it, backing it tracks? It depends on the songs. I, there are some songs where I just downloaded the mm -hmm. backing tracks, and the most uh, recent videos. Every time I, I played the the entire back and track. Because I saw you're playing stuff, bass. you know, you're playing bass and yeah. you can see that you get the slide out and everything. Yeah. So is that one where you've just programmed in the drum parts and you just play everything? Yeah, the, I don't play drums. <laughs> it was just a su superior drummer yeah. software. And uh, for the rest, yeah, I like to do it myself. I'm not a bass player. I'm not a lap steel player, but I want to try everything. Oh, and, that um, sounds good. And yeah, but, and um, I... Even if my band is my main activity now, I I don't want to give up on YouTube because that's where I started, and I know that some people will never get to see us live because they live uh, far away, mm -hmm. and YouTube is the only thing they have. So I um I want to e even if it's not very often, I I want to keep on uh, uploading videos uh, from time to time. Oh well, that's cool. Well, uh, mm -hmm. it's been a pleasure having you on, and you know talking about gear and stuff like that but and can you tell us you know in 2020 you mentioned the hellfest thing yeah. which is kind of exciting any other big deals happening in uh, yeah, you know, like more I, music um, or? we we are going to tour with uh, jerry james nichols in spain in march cool um and i'm sure we we're going to have uh, more festivals that i don't know about yet hmm. um I, i'll be at nam for the first time oh cool yeah with gibson so i'm uh I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, man. Uh, it's uh, yeah, I think it's a it's a dream. I've never been to the U.S. before, so it will be my first time in the U.S. and my really first time at Nam. It's and a I great can't show. Wait. It yeah. is a great show, and the Gibson stand is a great stand. Oh, that's fun. We're, we're, we'll be on the Gibson stand uh, a few times, I think, through the through the show. So maybe we'll see. Are you performing on the stand? Or are you not yeah. sure? Are you yeah. Not? Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll almost certainly see you there. Yeah. Cool. Well, look, it's been great. Thank you very much for getting Thank up you. so early to, uh, to come over today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as Thanks I said, everybody, if you want to find out more about Laura, I'll put links in the description below. But yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Um, thank you guys for tuning in and we shall see you next time.